Okay, here's a quick little video, I hope, on uh, the crystal filters that I used in my little QRP homebrew rig of a previous video, this little jewel right here, which uh, gives me a kick every time I use it. <laughs> anyway, um, one of the things that makes it so useful is uh, a uh, selective crystal filter in the IF, just like that, exactly like that, as a matter of fact, four-pole filter. So what I want to show you is, right now I have a noise generator right here, old Palomar Noise Bridge. And it's jumpered directly into the receive antenna port of the K3. And they're 4 megahertz crystals, so we've got it set for about 4 megahertz. And this is kind of our baseline here. I don't know if you can see that. Let me try to get a better shot here. Doesn't really look like it's all that great in focus, but I think you'll get the idea. Anyway, we're centered on um, just a tad under 4 megahertz, and the span of the pan adapter is 2 kilohertz, so it's plus or minus 1 kilohertz. Now, let me, that's uh, directly shorted, and we're at, um, what are we at here? Roughly minus 50 dBm. So that's our reference starting point. Now let me take the shorting uh, barrel out and put a uh, three-pole filter in. So hang on. Okay, here's the three-pole filter. And you can see we've got a nice little uh, display there of the pass band attenuation and so forth. Um, and if you get up close to it, you can actually maybe be able to see enough detail to uh, actual make some measurements across the or up and down vertical scale we're at uh, 10 dBm per division so 10 dB basically per division and each side of the center line of the filter is 1 kilohertz so I can actually make some measurements and come up with a shape factor for this filter and compare it to other filters. And that's pretty much what I did. So if I turn the markers on, um, kind of cramped for space here. Okay, marker A is here. And marker B is here. Now if I kind of zoom in and try to estimate the 6 dB bandwidth, you can see I got ripple in there and some insertion loss, but you know it's a homemade filter. So if I take those, the difference between those two marker frequencies, it'll give me a, uh, a starting point to categorize the filter at a 6 dB point. Let me pause the camera and do that. Hang on. Okay, I did some uh, measure, and you know, none of this is uh, dead balls accurate. This is all very relative stuff. You know, it's uh, not professional equipment, methods, or means by any stretch. But it's useful for comparison and stuff. So anyway, what I came up with here was a 6 dB point is uh, 250 hertz. So that's the uh, 6 dB bandwidth. Now to fully categorize the filter and come up with a shape factor, we need another reference point which is usually defined as 60 dB. So let me adjust the markers for that and um, we'll come up with uh, uh, the rest of the data we need. So hang on. Okay, I've adjusted the markers 
for you know pretty close guess pretty close to uh, what I think would be the 60 dB points and uh, measured the amplitude on the uh, dBm scale on the left and what I came up with was uh, 1.62 kilohertz so that's the 60 dB the 6 dB was 250 Hertz that's a 6.48 filter shape ratio which is uh, not too shabby so let me show you what it looks like down here for some reason it doesn't want to focus on that Probably a lighting issue. Maybe. Anyway, there it is. So that's the three pole. Now we're going to take a look at the four pole. Okay, here's a four pole filter. And I've got it orientated this way um, so you can see some of the different components besides just the crystal filters. Between each filter there's a little capacitor. You can barely see it. But there's one here, one here, and one here. And input and output capacitors. And then the four crystals. That's what uh, makes these filters up. And by the way, I got a lot of information from that. From, uh, book experimental methods in RF design I don't know if you can see that or not anyway it's a good book uh, for tinkers and experimenters and they've got a whole section there on uh, crystal filters and you know what uh, the important parameters are okay so anyway that's the filter let's look at the response So this has, if you can, probably can't see it close enough, but it's got just a little bit more insertion loss, which is to be expected, because it's got another crystal. But the shape factor is much better. The bandwidth at the 6 dB points, I've already figured out, is 220 hertz, compared to 250 hertz for the 3 pole. And let me pause it and do the 60 uh, dB reading. Hang on. Okay, I've done uh, the measurements, you know, as close as I can get. Remember, this is all real relative. Um, and just for comparison of one to the other. So for 60 dB, I came up with 1.01 kilohertz. So 6 dB was 220 hertz. 60 dB was 1.01, that's a 4.59 shape factor compared to the 6.48 for the 3 pole. So you can see if you can live with a little bit extra insertion loss, maybe a dB or two in the pass band, you can get tighter skirts by adding an extra crystal, an extra pole to the filter. And with this particular transceiver, I got more than enough gain, so I can spare a few dB in the uh, IF pass band. So, anyway, let's take a look at it. There it is. And this is an identical replica of what I've got in the rig that you might be hearing right now. So that's a pretty tight pass band. Um, now the other thing that I did 
which I don't have uh, ready to show anybody just yet because I gotta put it all back together is a variable bandwidth crystal filter which uses varactor diodes and a DC bias to change the capacitance between the crystals and the shunt elements and theoretically you'll be able to shape the band pass of the filter by adjusting it from a narrow to a wide position. In other words, the amount of DC bias that goes on the varactors will change the shape and the bandwidth of the filter. And I had mixed success with that, but I might recreate that and tinker with it some more. So anyway, that's uh, the Crystal Filter IF for the UCR Homebrew CW 40 meter Transceiver. 73 and keep on tinkering.